Hey everyone, I'm Domingo Gomez and I finally tried several phones with the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3. The Red Magic 9 Pro, the OnePlus 12 and the Galaxy S24 Ultra. For some time I wanted to do this video but I didn't want it to rely on one phone or one result, especially from a gaming phone. But regarding the others, I will be using the Galaxy S23 FE with the Gen 1 and the OnePlus 12R with the Gen 2. And this way all the phones will be recent, giving us a good idea of the current performance difference. So, for for this test, I want to show you the results I obtained in these synthetic benchmarks. Right now you're seeing the three phones with the same processor, but the OnePlus 12 gives us a much lower result. It's almost like it has a different processor. And when we include the OnePlus 12R and the S23 FE, everything gets even more confusing since on several occasions the Galaxy manages to surpass the OnePlus. You may be surprised by this result, but it turns out that OnePlus requires you to activate the high performance mode from the back battery settings. And if you do this, then you can see how some of its results are better than before, but not all of them. And if you think about it, it's quite interesting how the brand doesn't want you to use the full power of the processor, maybe because, well, it heats up a lot the device or it just consumes a lot of energy. Still, benchmarks are just a reflection of the hardware of the phone, but the real use, it's the most important thing. And to prove that to you, I've placed all of these apps in the same order on all the phones I had. And then, I simply started to open and closing apps to see which was the fastest in two rounds. In the first round, we can see how the previous order is maintained since if we put Antutu next to it, the results match. But if you look at the second round here, the OnePlus 12 is the winner, while the Red Magic is almost as slow as the S23 FE reopening apps. This is a clear example how software optimization can surpass the power of a phone on benchmarks and also improve our experience. But you also need to keep in mind that some apps are better optimized for some processor or even for some systems. To show you what I'm talking about, I created a project in CapCut with a 4K video but I exported it in 1080p which, well, it took a while. Then I enter a dub rush and I did the same thing but this time I exported it in 4K which took much longer than before. In this table, we again see how CapCard results accompany those of the processors we use, with the exception of the S24 Ultra, which was much slower. But in a dub rush, these values are not so linear, so much so that the S23 FE turns out to be better than both OnePlus. All of this to tell you that, yeah, you can clearly see the difference in performance between the Snapdragon Gen 3, the Gen 2, and even the Gen 1. But overall, you need to have in consideration the system optimization, the app optimization, and even the quality of other components of the phone, since the first three with the Gen 3 brings UFS 4.0, while the other two only UFS 3.1. You know, if you have two PCs with the same specs, you can kinda expect the same performance, but two phones with the same processor will not give you the same results. And that's because, you know, with phones, you have a lot more variables and, you know, some of them can even be more important than the processor you have. That's why a Pixel 8 Pro can be as fast as the new Galaxy S24 Ultra. Besides that, if gaming on a phone is your thing, any of these will allow you to play Genshin Impact at 60 frames per second without any problem. Seriously, even if you put everything to the max. However, if you're thinking of playing for more than 30 minutes, there's only one clear option, and that's gaming phones. To demonstrate this, I run the Solar Bay test from 3D Mark that it's a bit more demanding than the CPU throttling test I used in the past. And as you might expect, only the Red Magic did not lose its performance over multiple rounds. But the saddest thing of all is that, in terms of percentage, if we compare the initial performance with that of the 20th round, the new Gen 3 turns out to be worse than the Gen 2 and the Gen 1. You know, we're at a point where these machines are not capable of giving us full performance performance that we want with these processors without improving their ventilation or sacrificing a little bit of comfort. Just look at the Red Magic that reaches easily 50 degrees Celsius without losing performance. And according to the people at Nubia, well, it's capable of reaching 60 without throttling. When I saw this, I was surprised that they were, you know, like happy that the phone was capable of reaching this temperature. But the thing is that you use your phone with your hands. And these temperatures, well, 
they're quite capable of causing burns. That's why Samsung, OnePlus and many other companies have to sacrifice a little bit of the performance in order to reduce the heat of the phone, which at the same time creates the question, is it worth paying more for the best processor? Honestly, I don't think so. We have seen how Google with a processor that it's much weaker than the Snapdragons can do an excellent job in the performance. But a processor, it's much more than speed. You know, it's related with camera performance, the screen, what you're capable of doing, and nowadays also with AI. But at the same time, you know, most of the times phones from last year or even two years ago are capable of doing that. They just don't do it because the brands want to sell you the latest device. And a good example of that, it's the Galaxy S24 Ultra with all the AI features that, dude, I'm pretty sure an S23 Ultra is capable of doing so. But anyway, that's just my opinion. And if you have a different one, I will read it in the comments. I see you in the next one. Ciao, ciao.